Income tax 2023-2024. Qualified business income deduction tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because tax season is a time when we test out our math skills and question our life choices. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Form 1040 example problem using LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access, though, to the IRS forms, instructions, schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Okay, standard starting point. Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid that dang taxman. Living in Beverly Hills, 90210. No dependents to start off with. We got the Schedule C income flowing into line 8 of the form 1040. Let's follow that flow through. Go into the Schedule C where we have the profit or loss from business. We have an income statement format income at the 120,000 to start off with. 20,000 expenses. In essence, net income being the 100,000 which flows through to the schedule number one additional income and adjustments to income part number one additional income line number three business income or loss there's the 100,000 that goes through the form 1040 page one line number eight we also have from the schedule c once again that bottom line that 100,000 in essence the net income which flows through to the schedule se self-employment tax social security and medicare calculation and that is currently coming out to the 14129 which rolls through to the schedule 2 additional taxes part number 2 other taxes line 4 self-employment tax number 4 14129 that rolls through to the form 1040 page number 2 line 23 other taxes including self-employment tax 14129 also on that schedule se we can see that half of that 14,129 is here, 7,065 deductible on the Schedule 1. So we go to the Schedule 1, where we saw the additional income and adjustments to income, but this time we're going to page number 2, which is Part 2, Adjustments to Income, Line 15, Deductible Part of Self-Employment Tax, 7,065. So to summarize, back to the Form 1040, we've got then the 100,000 rolling into line number eight. We've got then the 7,065 adjustments to income to give us the AGI adjusted gross income, 92,935. We've got the standard deduction for a single filer at the 13,850. Then we've got this thing that we've just been jumping over every time, which is the 15,817 large amount of the qualified business income deduction, which is coming from form 88. Uh, 8995 or form 8995A, depending on the complications. Here's our worksheet for it. This is where our focus will be this time. That gives us our subtotal taxable income, 63268. Then page number two, calculating the tax, ordinary income tax here with our progressive tax system, 9,228. And then, of course, that self employment tax that we pulled in, 14,129, giving the total tax, 23,357. All right, let's go back to the first page here. Our point of focus is on this, uh, this qualified business income deduction. Now note, this is a change that happened a few years ago when they were trying to simplify the tax code and a lot of the stuff they did did simplify the tax code, but this particular qualified business income deduction is a mess, okay? This was not uh, well crafted. And I think part of the process of that was that uh, which is often the case, 
they were focusing in on business tax adjustments for large corporations, C corporations, and then as like an afterthought, they, they've tried to go back and shore up the, the logical consequences if you were trying to mirror a similar type of situation in things for small businesses, such as flow through entities, S corporations, partnerships, LLCs, as well as the Schedule C sole proprietorship, which is our point of focus here. So I won't go over all of the kind of things we talked about in the prior presentation of this other than to say what is important with the tax software calculation then to get the proper calculation is we certainly need to get the proper industry that the, 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 the business is in uh, so that it can properly calculate uh, the qualified business income. And we also need to be mindful of the income limitations dependent on the industry because if we go over uh, a certain amount, then again, the software possibly could help us calculate, but it's going to be going from the form 8995, which is our current form that is being used, to form 8995A, which could phase out and then ultimately be eliminated. So let's currently see what we have here. So we've got then this 15817. Uh, if I look at this worksheet, what it's taking is our business income, which came in from the Schedule C. Notice what it's deduct deducting to get to the qualified business income. It's deducting the 7065 that came from the Schedule 1. So in other words, you would think that our qualified business income would be like the same income as being calculated for like self-employment tax, for example, but it's being adjusted for some things that we get to deduct that are related to the business that aren't on the Schedule C, such as the, the uh, one half of the self-employment tax. And the reason these aren't on the Schedule C typically is because they, they're things that we want, the IRS wanted to be deductible for federal income tax purposes, but not for self-employment tax. Therefore, they couldn't put it on the Schedule C because then it would be deductible for both self-employment tax and federal income taxes. So they had to put it somewhere else, which is on the Schedule 1, right? But now we're talking about another kind of thing, another deduction here, and we're trying to calculate the qualified business income, which we're taking into account those deductions that we got on the Schedule 1 uh, for it. So that's going to be kind of the idea that you that might help to think through what is happening here. So once we have that, we thought we saw that 20% of it uh, could be deductible. So you would think then you could just take this and say, okay, well, then I'm going to take this uh, amount that was we got to here, which was to do, let me do that again, which was the 92, well, now my calculator is not, 92,935 times the 0 0.2, which would be 18,587. But no, it's 15,817. Why? Because we have an income limitation. So let's go on over to the form 8995 to look at that in a bit more detail. So here's the 8995 qualified business income deduction. We're using the simplified computation at this point, in part because we're below the income threshold to be able to do that. So here's the qualified business income we saw pulled in from that worksheet. And so that's calculating down here. And I won't go through the full every step along the way. Just to note here that right here on line 11, we have the taxable income before qualified business income deduction is the 7985. So if I go back to this form, we had uh, the 7985 being pulled in and you can see it was trying to say it's the taxable income before the qualified business income deduction. So here it is after it, so we have the 63,268 plus this qualified business income deduction, 15,817. And that's coming out to that 7,985. So if I go back to this form 8,995, we see that's the 7,985 here. So basically it's taking the, the smaller of 20% of this number or that number. So if I take the 20% of this number, we're getting that 15,817 which is being calculated, uh, which is being calculated here. Now, so, so now things get a little bit messy if our income goes above the threshold of 182,100. If I clear the threshold entirely and I'm in uh, particular types of industries that are gonna be the 
SSTB uh, excludable uh, from your qualified trades or business type of income. These are going to be the service type areas, health, law, accounting, actuarial science, performing, uh, consulting, athletics, and so on and so forth. Let me go above the threshold. So I'm going to go here and say, do do schedule C, do do. I'm going to change it to a service industry code just to make sure we have that. So it's going to be uh, legal services that I'm applying this out to here. And then let's change the income above the threshold. And so I'm going to go down here and make this, let's make this 420. And so then if I go back on over, you could see that the qualified business income deduction here eliminated. <laughs> so we've been, which is of course scary. And we moved from using the easier form 8995 to form 8995A, which you can see populated over here, qualified business income deduction. Here's what that form looks like. All right, let's go back to the form 1040 and say, what if we're like within uh, the phase out threshold? So I'm gonna go back on over and let's change this to 250,000, let's say. Go back to the forms. Now we have something there, but we're still using the form 8995A. As you can see here, here's our worksheet. So we've got then the business income, now the self-employment tax is the 13, uh, 13 pulling in from the schedule one. So we're at the 216, uh, 987. If I go to the schedule 8995A now, qualified business income deduction, we've got the 216, 987, and then we've got the uh, phase in reduction and that's given us the uh, total qualified business income component 25138. And that's being pulled in uh, from line 26. So let's go to page number two, where we have the phase in reduction. So here's the amount from line three, the 43, uh, 395. Here's the taxable income before uh, business income deduction. Here's the threshold, the 182, 100 or 364, 200. If married filing joint, we subtract the two. We get the 2137. Uh, we're, we're using, of course, the 182 100 because we have a single filer phase in range and the phase in percent. So it's calculating uh, the phase in, and that's how, in essence, we're getting this 25138. So, in essence, that 25138 basically pulling in to the form uh, 1040 here. So we see that phase in amount. So next, let's go back to where we were before. So we're gonna go back under the threshold, which the threshold is 180, uh, 182,100 or 364, 200 if married filing joint. So let's bring it back to what we had before. So I had 120,000 and let's go back on over here. So now we have our calculation here. Now, just to note that notice that you would think again, if I went in here that we would have the 100,000 minus the 7065, and that would be at times 0.2, which would be 18,587. And the reason we're not getting that, as you recall from the form 8995 here, is because we, we had to take the lesser of, of that number or the 7985 times the 20%. So if I had other income like W2 income, it would impact this number and we might have a larger deduction of the 18,587. Uh, so for example, if I went back on over and I said we had W2 income duh, duh, of like 20,000 and then I go back on over, uh, you could see now if I go back to the form 1040, uh, it's calculating at the 18,587. Uh, so just to note that as well, the W-2 could have an impact on the calculation. Other income could have an impact on that calculation, uh, even if you're basically under the threshold. And then also remember that when we're looking at this calculation for the qualified business income, it's basically including things that would be on the schedule one here, page number two, that would be related to the business. So that would include things like the self-employment SEP and the self-employed health insurance. 
These three items are not deducted on the Schedule C, as you would expect, because if they were deducted on the Schedule C, then that would also reduce the calculation for the self-employment tax. So by putting those over here, even though they're business related, they're reducing the federal income tax, but not the self-employment, kind of like adjusting box one of the W-2, but not box five uh, and, and three. So, you know what I mean? So, so like, for example, if I went and I added a SEP calculation, then let's put like uh, 2000 in the SEP. And let's also say that we had uh, health insurance. Duh, duh, duh. So other health insurance of 5,000. And then we don't have any, let's remove the W-2 income to get that out. So, duh. And then now we're gonna go back on over and say, okay, so these are included, these are deducting, and it's part of the, the form 1040 adjustment. We can see that pulling in here as adjustments to income. If I go into this worksheet now, now we've got the 100,000 still from the Schedule C, and we're taking out these three amounts because they're still related to the business. So just remember, just to note that not everything, if I go back to the Schedule 1, page 2, is related to the business. So you might have other deductions here that have nothing uh, to do uh, with the business. So like if it was an IRA instead of a SEP, like if I had money in the IRA for 3000 instead of having money in the SEP for 3000 it's not directly related to the business then. Da -da -da. And so I'm going to go, okay. So even though that amount is included here in the adjustments to income, it's not going to be adjusted in our, our worksheet here, right? The IRA isn't included. So just to kind of get an idea of that, we're trying to include the things that are related to the business that are deductions in essence, whether they be on the Schedule C or the other main place on the Schedule 1, page 2, part 2. So I don't, want, I don't want to get too much more in in the weeds on this, but just to point out though, that if you had if you had multiple Schedule Cs, that could complicate, of course, uh, the calculation as well. And if you had basically income that's flowing in through a flow-through entity, such as an S corporation or a partnership, an LLC, then again, that could be something that, that would flow through and then you'd have the calculation possibly uh, here on uh, the form 1040. I want to, I don't want to, we're kind of running long on time and we're mainly focused on uh, the Schedule C, but just to have an idea of that, because oftentimes when you're doing Schedule C uh, calculations, people will come up with questions and say, well, what if I move to a flow through entity like an, an S corporation or an LLC or a partnership, what would that do to my calculations and of course in those kind of questions we have to think okay what's going to happen with your with your self-employment tax how's that going to happen are you going to have to file wages or payroll even if it's just you the owners of the business what's that going to look like and now we have this issue with the qualified business income deduction you know is that going to make any kind of difference if we move to a flow through entity as we do the calculation on the se separate tax return flows through to the schedule K1s. And typically we would, you would think we'd do the calculations here uh, on the, the flow through income to the form uh, 1040s. So all these kind of cal complications between these different entities and different uh, tiers of taxes and whatnot, I think in part is what they were trying to eliminate by simplifying the tax code as they did a pretty good job of by increasing the standard deduction and reducing you know, the itemized deductions and the idea of flattening the tax code, having less progressive tiers and whatnot. But again, this particular area uh, added complication uh, to our calculations.